team of, of people that I work with and I got to know under Teresa's uh, every day we're out there waving and everything else but you know like I said earlier every meeting you go to every place you go to you meet that one person or this person or that person that inspires you and every time I go to these events that's why I don't say no is because I want to see that next person that's going to inspire me to continue forward with my 11 year journey you know, when I first found out that I had AIDS, not just HIV, but full-blown AIDS, uh, it was 2003. And you know, when a doctor tells you to go home and make final preparations because you're going to die, from something he didn't even understand himself, that's a scary, that's a scary traumatic event. But then I met Dr. Olawali. And he geared me and got me healthy a little bit, you know, because we started from a 16 CD4 and then 2004 rolled around. I had ambitions. I wanted to be, you know, a city councilor. I wanted to do things with my life, and I ran at 29 years of age. I didn't do very well. <laughs> I think I got 28% of the vote, where the last time I got 42% of the vote. But at the same time, though, it shows me the tolerance of, of my city that is growing. I remember when I went to my dad, and my mom used to tell me, you'll tell me if you've got HIV, won't you? Yeah, sure, sure. Even though I already had it, I wouldn't tell them. One, I didn't want to worry them. Two, I didn't want what they said would happen to be reality. Because they told me, Jeremy, you're going to catch AIDS if you continue this lifestyle. Not when you know, they didn't have a lot of education either. But one day, and I was telling you all about Eddie, and here he comes. Um, the story that I gave, you know, we had to go and um, change some insurance around one day. And um, they did a moral swab on me. He said it was to see if I smoked. I'm sitting with a cigarette in my hand right there. I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. And uh, I told my good friend Eddie, who's not with us anymore. He said, oh, Jeremy, you better get ready. They're going to find out. I was like, find out what? That you've got the virus. I said, how are they going to do that? He said, that's what they do. They test you when they do insurance things. So that little swab thing, it's not for just cigarettes. It's to test and see if you have any debilitating diseases. Well, two weeks roll by and I get a letter in the mail saying you need to seek professional medical attention. I'm sorry we turned you down for your insurance. I had to call them because, you know, they'd already put in the insurance policy and everything else. So they didn't know why it got turned down. And that was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life was to tell my dad, my mom, I have AIDS. We all broke down together, didn't we, Dad? But I tell you, like Juanita told you, and like everyone else that will tell you, since that time, there has been no stopping me. There's been nothing holding me back. I can finally be able to go out. Even when Mama said, please don't go out there and get on the news and talk about your HIV, Jeremy, please, please. And I know why. You know, a lot of times the family members have to deal with a lot too. Even though we have to follow the, even though we have to walk the journey, they have to endure just like we do. They might not go through the pains or the meds or anything like that, but they do go through the questions at church, the questions from friends, and they've got to put on brave faces and give them the best answer they possibly can. Am I right, Angelica? Even though sometimes their children don't listen and they leave for a while. Because, you know, we want the very best for our children, right? You want the very best for them. You want them to have everything that they need. And sometimes that pushes kids away. Because I want to do it myself. Like James. Which we miss. But, you know, that street works both ways. So, not only am I asking you to support the ones living with HIV, but the ones living with HIV, have a little bit of passion and love and support for your family members as well. 
they're doing the very best they can with what education they had regarding the topic. There's nothing wrong with sending them to groups. That's why we opened up our friends and family to everyone now. We want you to know about HIV. When you come in our groups now, you're going to hear the stories from everybody in there about what they're going through, about what they've been through, about this new medicine, what it does to their bodies. We just don't talk about that. We talk about everyday life, everything that we face every day. Relationships, love. I think the biggest thing that we get all the time is I've got to tell this person I have HIV. What will they think of me? Will they love me? Will they still want me? You know, 10 years ago, the answer was probably a more definitive no. But today, two of my last relationships were not positive people. So it can work. Not maybe not the relationship, but it can work as long as they've got the education about it, as long as they know which, what to expect, and especially now that we've got prep. If you're going, if you're, I'm gonna tell you now. If you live a lifestyle that is in line with how you can get to contract HIV, and this goes with anybody, gay, straight, male, female, 50 or 19, check out prep because it can save your life and it can stop HIV infections. All right. Who else would we like to have come up and share any more stories with us? Anyone? Okay. All right, now if you'll join me, Bob, if you'll come back up here one more time with us, we're going to do a litany of remembrance. Inside of your programs, you should have a folded piece of paper that says litany of remembrance, response of reading. And we're going to start that right now. And Bob, will you begin with us? We have gathered here to celebrate the lives of our cherished friends and relatives, and even those whom we have never met who have passed on as a result of HIV or AIDS. The candles that surround us remind us of the impact locally, but sadly are only a slight reflection of the 1,500 plus lives which have been lost to HIV and AIDS in our area, and another 28 million more worldwide. We come together in grief and acknowledge our loss, but we also come together in joy, acknowledging the richness of our lives because of the depth of love that was shared with our loved ones. gather here to celebrate the lives of our loved ones as well as those worldwide who we do not even know personally who are living with HIV AIDS. We acknowledge their pain, their suffering, their loneliness, isolation, despair, and the stigma and discrimination they must face as a result of their disease each and every day. But we also rejoice in their hopes, their dreams, their accomplishments, their determination and perseverance to never give up, and in the example they set for each of us who have other battles we must face. May God grant us wisdom, strength, and resources to help our loved ones and others infected with HIV AIDS fight a brave and victorious fight. By candlelight, we honor the lives of all persons living with HIV AIDS. We gather here to celebrate and support those individuals and organizations that assist those living with HIV AIDS. We acknowledge the hospitals and clinics, health departments, doctors, nurses, medical and non-medical research organizations, community-based organizations, worldwide national and local support organizations, schools, colleges, publishers, political and religious organizations, and other groups who give of their time, talents, and treasures to fight the effects of the HIV AIDS pandemic. May God bless them with the time, talents, knowledge, insights, resources, and personnel to perform their mission successfully. May God give us all the resources to support them so that they may continue forward in this fight. By candlelight, we honor those individuals and organizations working to ease the burdens of those living with HIV and AIDS and working to 
finally put an end to this disease. Once again, let's give a big round of applause for Bob Slaughter. Thank you so much, Bob. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to share with us just for a couple moments a spiritual message of healing, let's welcome once again Reverend Emily Bell. Stupid and um, 
support of the board. Irritated enough with the uneducation and the non-care from my other brother, and my brother had glass of coca in my bed, and I just drank right after him and said, see, I'm gonna be okay. Luckily I am, <laughs> I'm blessed by that. At church this morning, the uh, lectionary reading was from John, Gospel of John, where Jesus tells his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. Since I go, I will return for you. All of our people are there. The house as many rooms. And my brother's in one room. Deborah's in a room. Tim, Jim, Tim, whatever is that, and Ben, Ron, they've got a room. Hayward's mm -hmm. got a room. Paul, in a minute. Bill, some, I'm trying to work out some of the names that y'all talked about. Uh, Mickey, Joey, all these people, and everybody else, every name that, that's on those balloons. And one day, one day, you and I get to see them all again. Because we've got that promise. We will see them again. And I don't know about you, but I know my brother's got the place all decorated up. Because <laughs> that's his thing. And I look forward to that day. I look forward to meeting everybody else that's up there. And all of us together joining together as one spiritual family. I don't care what church we attend, we are all part of the same family of God. Amen. You know? Amen. I'm privileged to pastor the church that I've pastored for giving part for the past 16 years now. The church itself is 26 years old. We celebrated our 25th anniversary last year. It was quite exciting. We are, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our church. We are the first church to affirm not tolerate, not accept, but affirm gay, lesbian lifestyle or gay, lesbian people because it's not a lifestyle. I'm firmly believe I was born this way. Mm. And with the epidemic, we have been taking care of people and doing funerals and doing things for the people that have passed on for the past 26 years and will continue. We're not a very big church, but God blessed us with the building that we own. God is blessing us because we're doing ministry and we're taking care of each other. Yeah. You know, that's what he talks. That's what it's about. I take care of you, you take care of the next person, and the next person. All, all of us take care of one another. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, we just thank you right now, Lord, for all these people. I thank you, Lord, that come forward and talk about their pain. I thank you, Lord, that we can, that we can grieve together. We know that you are there. You promised we're two or more gathered in your name. You are the, their, their presence, so I know you're here. I can feel you here. Help us, Lord, to remember that it is you that we honor and that you have wrapped your loving arms around everyone that we have lost. They are your people, and we are your people whether we're on this side of the curtain or that side. Give us strength, Jesus, to work with one another. Give us the heart to listen and not judge and the heart to just be there for each other. Lord, we love you the best we know how. Teach us how to love you and each other better. Yvonne Bolton here. Ah, here she is. There she is. She's going to sing. Is it okay to sing it on the pillow? You okay with that? Okay, very good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Amazing Grace.
Thank you, sir. I want to thank everyone, each of you. You may now extinguish the flames of those you've lost and remember it, all the ones that still live with us today. Thank you, each and every one, Mayor Tomlinson, Kia Chambers, Bob Slaughter, Reverend Emily Bell, my staff, Larry Rush, Garrett, Tim, Charles, Greg, each of you here, you helped pave a better way. Thank you all. God bless. Good day. We have refreshments inside. Uh, please help yourself. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. We'll do photos out here if anybody needs them. Pictures in front. Oh, yes. I'm sorry.